Welcome everyone. This is Amir Mushtaq from U Council. We will talk about motions in Ontario civil courts today and we will provide some basic concepts about what is a motion, when do you bring it, and what's its purpose and role. Um, the, the main principles that we'll cover today apply to any kind of motion that you may bring, whether in a civil court, whether in federal court, uh, or in any other court um, in Ontario or across Canada. But in the end, we will cover some specific rules that apply to uh, motions in Ontario. So the concepts are pretty broad for anyone to understand what a motion is. As always, we begin with the disclaimer that this course is not legal advice. So if you have any specific questions, you must contact a lawyer or a paralegal. Um, our discussions today will include what is a motion, uh, what are some of the common types of motion? Who do you bring the motion before? Um, what are parties' positions, different kind of positions parties take with respect to a motion? I will talk about methods of hearing a motion um, and documents that you may need to produce or provide or, or submit to other parties and a motion. And then briefly, what kind of rules relate to a motion? So first, we want you to understand what is a motion. And a motion is really uh, a party going to the court and asking for a direction, a ruling, or a specific order um, on, on a specific issue before trial. So it's kind of a mini hearing before the trial on some specific issue. So um, the definition is very broad, and I want you to understand, you know, clearly the broadness of this uh, definition of motion because motion is a great tool that allows you to get so many um, orders or directions from the court that are not ordinarily covered in the process from filing a claim to trial. Um, and so I think one way to explain what a motion is is by giving you some examples of the kinds of motions uh, parties bring uh, and that will give you an understanding of what a motion really is. So one one example is noting in default, uh, production of documents, setting down timetable, summary judgments, uh, setting aside varying or amending court orders. So noting in default is, is, is an important motion and so in, in this situation for instance you were the plaintiff, you commenced a court action and the defendant uh, failed or refused to file uh, their statement of defense or fail or refuse to respond to the statement of claim and you now have the option uh, to note the defendant in default. So this is an important motion in the sense that uh, you bring the motion, you have the defendant noted in default, that will allow you to proceed and get a default judgment against uh, the defendant or you, whatever next steps that you may take, now the defendant uh, doesn't need to know what, you, what steps you are taking because the defendant has been noted in default, the defendant has refused to attend or participate in the court process. Uh, that's one kind of motion. Another motion is production of documents. In production of documents, for instance, um, at some point you realize that the opposing side has certain documents in its possession that are relevant to the issues in your case, but for whatever reason they have failed or refused to produce those documents, you can bring a motion in court and ask the court to issue an order to compel that party to produce those documents. Uh, production of documents uh, motion can also apply to third parties or where parties that have certain documents that are relevant to your case those parties are not parties to the claim or defense. They're not defendants. They're not uh, third party uh, defendants in the case, but they are parties outside of the court process. Yet you can obtain a court order uh, through a motion and compel those parties to uh, produce those documents. Uh, setting down timetable uh, is an example when your, um, your court action is not proceeding in a timely manner under the rules of civil procedure. Um, the defendant is engaging in certain delaying tactics and you want to compel the defendant to follow certain timetables so your matter, your action can proceed uh, efficiently towards trial. You can actually bring a motion uh, in the court and then have a timetable set down and ask the court to issue that order which will, um, which will compel the defendant or other parties to follow that timetable. 
Another example is a motion for a summary judgment. Uh, a summary judgment motion is, uh, is, is quite an important motion. It can resolve uh, at times uh, the entire issue, the entire case without uh, even going to trial. So uh, there are limited ways uh, in which you can bring a summary judgment motion, but it's an effective tool and you do it through a motion. Uh, finally, uh, setting aside varying or amending a court order. Let's say there was an order issued by a court with respect to certain uh, matters in your court action and you disagree with that uh, court order or you need to amend it or vary it in any way or set aside it, you'll have to bring a motion to have that particular order set aside or amended. So these are some of the common types. There are many, many more uh, kinds of motions. The idea that you want to keep in mind is that Anything that is not covered in the normal course of your uh, action and you need to get a specific order from a court, you will have to bring a motion, get that order, and only then you will be able to um, get those things done. So it is you are asking the court to give you direction on a specific issue, whether make a party do something or stop a party from doing something, and then you bring that motion by way of a motion. Who do you bring the motion before? In Ontario, in civil court, you generally have three options. Uh, you can bring a motion before a registrar, you can bring a motion before a master, or you can bring a motion before a judge. A judge has the overall power to, um, to answer to any kind of motion, but masters and registrars have specific jurisdictions. Uh, there are specific uh, issues that a registrar or a master can deal with. And there are, there are specific rules and the rules of civil procedure that, um, that provide that jurisdiction to a registrar or master. So you must know before commencing your motion who, is, who should you bring the motion before. Should it be before a judge, a master, or a registrar? And keep in mind that a motion that ought to be brought before a master should not be brought before a judge. And similarly, a, bo a motion that ought to be brought before a registrar should not be before brought before a master or a judge. Um, we have a separate lecture already available on this in terms of the difference between uh, the powers of a master and a judge. Uh, by all means, check that out. Now, party's position, um, what, I, what I want you to understand is that there are fundamentally two ways a motion can be brought. Number one is ex parte motion, meaning that you are the only party who is bringing that motion, attending that motion, and the circumstances are such that you don't need to serve the motion material, the notice of motion on any other party. So it's ex parte and you have to, there are specific circumstances in which you can bring an ex parte motion and you must meet those circumstances. Majority of the motions are brought on notice, meaning that all parties uh, to that action know they have been served with a notice of motion, a specific document that you will be bringing this motion on such and such date. And so when a motion is brought on notice, there are usually three, um, three kinds of parties' positions on it. Number one is on consent. So uh, you have brought a motion on notice where all parties are consenting, are agreeing to what you are asking the court to do. And, that, and that's not uncommon. You, you may need a specific direction from the court to do certain things or make a party do certain things, but that party uh, requires a court order. They're agreeing to the fact that you can ask the, the order on consent, and so you can have a motion on consent. Um, another uh, position that parties can take is unopposed. Unopposed is slightly different than on consent. Obviously, on consent, the party is agreeing to what you're asking. And in unopposed position, the party is basically saying, we're not taking a position. We're not opposing this motion, but we're not saying that you should provide it. So let the judge, let the court decide uh, how they want to give an order on that specific motion. And finally, uh, there could be motions contested. So you are asking a certain order from a court, but the other party or parties are opposing it. And so you have a motion, contested motion, which in most circumstances is, um, is, is the case. Okay. Um, how are motions heard? There are, there are basically two ways. A motion could be in writing and a motion could be uh, heard orally. 
there are a number of straightforward motions that are uh, done in writing even the contested motions in some circumstances can be done in writing and then majority of the contested motions opposed motions are done orally before a, a master or a judge there are some specific documents that you would need and and these documents are referred to in the rules uh, the, the most important one is notice of motion if you, you prepare this document you serve it on the other parties and you file it with the court and then whatever supporting evidence law legal or factual that you need to rely on to get the order that you're looking for you need to provide those and in some circumstances you will have to pro you have, will have to prepare and serve a factum a factum is really your legal argument in writing um, and there are specific rules about that in some motions you don't need a factum uh, but in, in majority of cases you may need a factum with your documents there are two fundamental legislations in Ontario. Now, this is specific to Ontario civil courts, the Courts of Justice Act and Rules of Civil Procedure that deal with um, the issues of motion and any other procedural matters. Uh, with respect to uh, the, the Rules of Civil Procedure, uh, the, the Rule 37 is the specific rule that deals with motions. Um, you must review that rule before you're proceeding and also you must review any practice directions for your region for your municipality uh, so that you know how the motions are brought in that specific uh, region and how they are heard rule 76 is uh, another rule which is called the simplified rules and it has its own rules about bringing a motion uh, so you must review those rules and we will uh, in future lectures go through each rules go through different types of motion but this lecture is really to give you a broad overview of what a motion is and, and what is the concept of a motion uh, small claims court has its own rules and you can review the small claims court rules to understand um, how the motion is to be brought in a small claims court okay so in essence you know if you use a motion effectively it uh, motion allows you to resolve some procedural issues that's important or at times narrow down the issues and in some cir circumstances completely resolve the issues so if a motion is used effectively it can save you significant time and significant cost it's a great tool but it has to be used smartly and it allows you to benefit from the overall court process in an effective way Hopefully this gives you a good sense of what a motion is, the basic concept, and then in our future lectures we'll, we'll pick each kind of motion and we'll talk about what that motion is, what are the circumstances, and we'll keep building on this uh, basic knowledge about a motion. Uh, please do write us back uh, on, on, in the comment section on YouTube or, or, any, or through any of these channels that we have listed, and we'll be happy to answer questions and, and uh, provide more information in the future lectures. Thank you for watching.